Hello everyone! Today I'm super excited because we finally get to talk about the piece speed that probably most people don't know about. This is the mysterious forbidden piece speed that you'll never see in a speed run because nobody goes for it. One main reason is because it's super duper hard. It does have that like manipulation of the P meter thing going on with it, but it's also early in the run. So like nobody would ever really do it. RTA runners have been able to successfully do it, but the reason it's forbidden is because if you just go for it and fail, it's going to cost you a whole lot of time and you might take damage. It's going to be a big waste. Nobody goes goes for it. It's not worth it, but it will save you time. This is the forbidden P speed of World 2 Level 5. Before we get too deep into the video, let's take a look at today's sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is an incredible browser source that is pretty much a one-stop shop for all your needs when it comes to a browser source. If other browser sources really hog up your computer, you know, kind of like Kirby, then this feature might be perfect for you. Opera GX allows you to control your CPU and your RAM output, even your network limiter, and it has a RAM limiter, so it allows you to really control how much is being utilized while you're gaming and while you're browsing. Let's face it, default browsers are Boring, And I think you guys know which ones I'm talking about. But Opera GX is definitely not boring. One of the main features that I want to talk about is the GX Boy mod. It's kind of like a retro mod for your browser. If you ever remember being at arcades when you were younger, playing Game Boy or Super Nintendo, then this mod is going to be perfect for you. Using the link in the description below, you can download Opera GX for free. And within Opera GX, you can visit the GX store where you can download mods, which is also free. Once you've downloaded the GX Boy mod, if you click the little power icon at the top, you can then modify all the things. Background music, wallpaper, keyboard sounds, shaders, browser sounds, web modding, and even themes. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better. GX is also equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser to GX, like browser history, bookmarks, and cookies. It's also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. Stop browsing like a clone, get a better browser. Give Opera GX a try, the download is in the description below. Thank you so much for listening, and now back to the video. What makes this level super interesting is because there's already a p-speed strategy RNG based that we could do to make it faster in that level and then there's also like a pseudo stutter step turn back uh, p-speed that we could do that seems like it would make the level faster but it's not really worth making it faster in case your p-speed messed up let's dissect and break down 2-5 with the mysterious p-speeds the RNG p-speeds and the forbidden p-speeds so let's go ahead and take a look. So we are right here above World 2 Level 5. We're just gonna do 2-5 normally, like how you'd see in the speed run. We're gonna use that as a base to see if some of the other strategies are faster and slower. And then as we work our way to the Forbidden P speed that, again, you will probably never ever see me do in a speed run, but you do get to learn about something new. I'm up here now. After we just did that level, very casual, very normal. I mean, it's still kind of hard to do that level perfectly all the time, but still pretty casual, pretty normal. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see where my score would normally be. There's a 1933. What that represents is 19 seconds and 33 frames. This game runs at 60 FPS, which means that's about 19 and a half seconds to do that level. That's gonna be our base right there. Let's go ahead and reload the level again. And we're not gonna really take this level super serious. We're gonna kind of take it slow and kind of break down what it is that we're actually looking at so one of the things that we can do in this level that has been known for a really long time is if you get lucky enough with this chain chomp right down here i don't want to get too close i don't want to take damage actually you know what let's take some damage whatever if you get good rng with this chain chomp here you can actually jump from the start when you normally get p-speed if you land on the ground here or here you know it doesn't have to be too crazy tight but if you run all the way and body rub up against this block right here without taking damage from the chain chomp you will actually get p speed and you'll be able to do kind of like a frame jump jump on it and jump over kind of like how you saw me right there where like i almost didn't get hit but then you know it kind of hit me so let's go ahead and do this level a couple times and let me show you what it looks like doing it that way
Alright, well, now that we finished the level, we're kind of back outside on the overworld, and if we look at the bottom, we can see the time is 1920, so that's 19 seconds and 20 frames. So we know just from that right there that that is 13 frames faster. But then you'd be asking, well, why the heck wouldn't you do that? It goes faster. Well, 13 frames, unfortunately, is not that much time. It's not even enough time to save over a Hammer Brother movement of one, because the end result is actually taking damage. It's either take damage nine out of ten times or get lucky with that one time and don't you think that mario 3 has enough rng this game is really based on a lot of consistency so that is a reason why we don't go for that strategy let's go ahead and go back into the level and talk about the next strategy that kind of uses that pseudo stutter step manipulate p meter thing that we've talked about in the past in the normal speed run il level of this that you would normally see we don't actually get p speed until about right here right about right here and then you jump between the Chomp and the Goomba. But there is a way where you can build P-Speed and do a turn back jump kind of right there where the Chain Chomp hit me and shoot the Koopa and it allows you to get P-Speed hopefully around this area, which a lot of people have said in streams before. Why don't you try and get P-Speed earlier? Because over here does seem a little late. So let's go ahead and do the pseudo stutter step, the big turn back jump, try and manipulate the P-Meter and see what kind of time we get. If we look at the bottom, we can see that it actually came in at 19 seconds and 18 frames. That's even faster, guys. That is even faster than the block rub strat, I guess we can call it, the block rub strat. It's only faster by about two frames. There is a couple things to unpackage here. Number one, you don't really have to worry about the chain chomp being in your way if you do choose to use this strategy. It's actually kind of safe with the chain chomp. However, there is one crucial problem to doing a strategy like this is that it depends on how how big of a turn back you do before you jump and how precise you kind of shoot your fireballs because you don't want to let go of the B button for too long and kind of lose a little bit of speed. It's all going to affect how the P meter builds. So if you're a couple frames late to the turn back jump or a couple frames or early, you don't turn back or enough, you jump too or you low, shoot your fireball, you're not really going to build your P meter. So this is why most RTA runners don't really go for strat like this. Another problem with it is that it can mess up building your P speed later naturally in the level. So it's not like if you mess this up, you can just always instantly go right back to doing the normal strat that you normally would do. And again, we are only 15 frames faster than what we normally do. Again, not even a Hammer Brother movement right there. So, so since we just dissected that, there's only one last thing left to do, and that is the Forbidden P-Speed strategy that does save a good chunk of time in this level, but it is just not worth going for. So let's go ahead and break that one down right now. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, where the heck does this P-Speed start? Where do you even get this P-Speed? Some of you are probably thinking, well, it's obviously got to be right here. This is the longest runway. And the answer of that is no. We are going to kind of do the same thing that we do in Fast 7-2. Editor's probably going to show you. Right at the top, when you build that P-Meter and you jump over the gap to rebuild your next arrows. It's kind of like working with the frame rules of the P-Meter only building when you're on the ground and when the game checks for it. And we're going to utilize that same concept but it's going to be much much tighter and the way that's going to work is that when you start the level you're going to want to jump on the block right here and instantly you're going to have to worry about rng with the chain chomp if the chain chomp jumps too much when you want to land here if he jumps too high or on too weird of an angle it's going to damage you kind of like that right instantly it's already forbidden because that kind of rng can happen but the idea is is you want to jump and you don't even land as early as possible naturally you would think you land as early as you can on the ledge so you can use as much runway as you can on the blocks before you jump but that again is also not the case because of the way the p meter builds it's not going to build and then recheck for that build at the right time if you utilize the whole space so the goal is to jump probably about right here or so so that when you finish running at the edge of the block it just builds the second arrow once you've done that 
One arrow is gonna decrease between the gap of here and here. This is where it's gonna be. So you wanna build the two arrows, jump over the gap, let one arrow decrease, and when you land here, you need to land on the exact frame that the game is going to check to see if you're on the ground with X amount of speed to build your P meter. And when you land, it's just instantly gonna start building. And because you're already moving forward, hopefully by the end of that ledge, you're gonna have P speed. That's way better than the block strat. And that is way better than doing the turn back pseudo step and you build your P speed earlier. Let's go ahead and give that a couple tries. I have no idea how long this is gonna take me. It's incredibly precise slash RNG, but let me go ahead and show you all what it looks like. And let's see how much time it's saves over the normal strat. The forbidden two time. We did it! I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that actually took me over half an hour to just do once. I'm not even kidding you. But if we look at the bottom of the screen, we can see 18 seconds and 45 frames. That means that P-Speed strategy right there, just that alone, is actually almost one second faster than the normal route. And if it took me over half an hour just to get it once, you better believe I'm not even ever gonna get it in one stream. It is just so precise and so so hard. If we play it back and we're going to go in slow mo from the question blocks to the orange block until I get P speed, watch the P meter very closely and watch how it's manipulated just to see how it works perfectly. Just go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see, Mario has to jump perfectly on that question block and then has to do pretty much like a small single frame jump with like a quick snap turn back to utilize as much of the ledge as possible and then probably get a good frame rule slash sub pixel. Who even knows the inner workings? All I know is it took me a long time to get it once. But there you have it. That is the forbidden P speed of 2.5. Most Mario 3 runners know about that P speed strategy and almost every single Mario 3 runner doesn't do that P speed strategy. There was no real videos ever made about it and it's never really been discussed. It's probably one of the weirdest, most forbidden P speed strategies in Mario 3 that the public probably doesn't really know about. So I'm glad I was able to share that with you. Hope you guys learned something and don't forget to stop by my stream, twitch.tv slash Mitch Flower Power. You can see it up here at the bottom. Whee! And you can ask me all about these weird P-Speed strategies and mushroom houses and all that weird stuff. So hope you guys all enjoyed and take it easy. Wee! Thank you so much for watching the video. If you really enjoyed my content, do not forget to subscribe. It helps me out so, so much. Thank you all for watching.